Welcome, pilots of the virtual skies. You know, yesterday the Boeing 737 MAX returned to profitable passenger carrying mode, carrying its first revenue passengers on a quick flight from, da from Miami to JFK. In honor of that, I thought I'd go back to X-Plane and fly our favorite uh, Zebo mod of the Boeing 737. It's not the MAX. I, I actually do have a MAX in my fleet, but... Um, it doesn't have my co-pilot uh, add-on, which helps out with the radios and helps with the procedures and really kicks up the immersion, uh, immersion level. So I'm going to stick with the 737 Zebo, and we're going to take a flight uh, Miami to New York. There's no terrain in that. There's no uh, challenge. Uh, well, there's certainly challenge, but I, I like a little terrain. So let's how about... Um, Let's go from Salt Lake City. We're at De uh, Delta today. Delta, Salt Lake is a Delta hub. And we'll fly to San Francisco, 30 December. Two-hour flight. I want to depart from 3-4 right. Although that could change, of course, depending on what the weather is. 20 minutes of taxi, 8 minutes of taxi in. Let's carry 2.2 of extra fuel. Our altitude will be 320. Nice uh, even heading for heading west. Passengers, we have a capacity of about 150, but probably make that just slightly under that. 737800. How about uh, 141? There we go. Cargo, 1.1. Got all those Christmas returns to carry back. Zero fuel weight is auto. Let's look at this routing. Desert 1, BAM, LLC, Legs, Bodega 3. Usually the sim brief routing is pretty good. I often mentioned that um, that real live ATC is the best, but if you can't get live ATC, this program called Pilot to ATC is the second best thing. So let's just pull it up. Not only is it good as an ATC, but it's great for for flight planning. Now, my virtual co-pilot, her name is Christy. Um, she, her, na her default name used to be Linda, but I went into the files and changed it to Christy. Christy's the name of an ex-girlfriend, so she's not very sociable to me anymore, and I don't think this Christy will be any more sociable, <laughs> but uh, she'll, she'll treat me with business-like professionalism, I'm sure. Um, also, she used to say, Hi, Cap! Well, that's a little informal. So now she, I changed the file. Now she gives me the proper captain, as she should. Oh, it looks like X-Plane is due for an update. I'm going to ignore that. We'll update, we'll update a little after we're done, after we're done recording. So let's see. Flight plan import. KSLC, KSFO, enter, import. There's our zebra. We're going to SLC. We want a gate. Gate C4 is fine. Live weather. It's dark in the morning. I think we're set. So we have a basic routing. Let's uh, grab a SID out of Salt Lake City. Simbrief is recommending Desert One. Let's see. Hmm, I don't see Desert One. 
has available. What have other other people have used Zion? The Zion up there as a departure. How about Epsis? Snope. Rumps. Nope. Hmm. Well, let's just take a look. We want something going southwest. Sever 3 goes southwest. It ends at OAL. That seems to be a good one. So we'll take Sever 3 and OAL. That will work. Now, let's have an arrival, preferably one that uses OAL. Here are the arrivals to San Francisco. And here is, where is Bodega 3? That's what a lot of people are using. Bodega 2. Oh, there's Bodega 2. Hmm, I'm not, I don't like that one. Especially since OAL is way down here. Let's go with uh, Mod 8. There's OAL. And that will be fine. Okay. Sever 3 to OAL to mod eight. S E V Y R three O A L V O R mod eight. Analyze route. Route is valid. Okay. I always like to get a route is valid. And I think we are ready to generate a flight plan. Here we are, it's cold, it's dark. Let's meet Christy. Hello, Captain. My name is Christy. I am your first officer today. Yeah, I'm glad you gave me the proper respect by calling me Captain and not just Cap. And, you know, Linda is the Spanish word for beautiful. You are quite beautiful, but change your name to, to Christy. Uh, first thing I wanna do, actually, let's go outside. Pretty cold and windy out here. I know the crew usually arrives in a in a crew van, but I've earned a little status at this airline. I like to show up in my limousine, so I'll have a limousine. The rest of the crew can have a crew van. We'll put a couple of baggage carts in here, and we'll get a fuel truck. And that's good for ground handling. We will also attach the jet bridge. And what I like to do, even before I get aboard the airplane, is to do what's called a rainbow check. A rainbow check is a, um, let's see, rainbow check. There it is, rainbow check. Rainbow check is a check behind the flight deck. Behind the seats, you'll find some interesting stuff. You'll find, uh, there's the aircraft and cabin logbook. We want to look up any gripes, any write-ups from a previous flight. We want to check in the mill list, the minimum equipment list, and make sure that anything that's broken or missing is okay to fly with. We'll check these circuit breakers to make sure they're all in. Now, the reason it's called a rainbow check is because that's the motion of your eyes. You start at the floor at one end, and you move your eyes up in the shape of a rainbow. 
emergency escape rope, make sure it's in there, make sure it's attached. You want to check for a first aid kit, you want to check for a crash axe, you want to check on the back of the door, there's often a air worthiness certificate, maybe some other documents the plane needs, a pilot operating handbook. Check more circuit breakers, check that they're all in, check the fire extinguisher, make sure that it's in the green. Check down here on the floor, there's a little panel. I'm not sure if I can see it in the dark. I don't know. Can I see it in the dark? I might, might have to get a little illumination back here and come back here again. Uh, there's the back of the door. I don't see an airworthiness certificate. <laughs> I don't want to come back here again. I want to find that. There's the little panel. This little panel on the floor accesses the emergency uh, gravity-fed landing gear deploy valves. And to be honest, I just don't see it in the dark. So maybe I'll hop up here. I don't really want to give up on the radio check without finding it. So we have ground power. We'll use it. Turn up some of these lights. Turn the battery on. Oops, that stopped the battery. Where's the battery in the dark? Got to find the battery. It's a guarded switch. Oh, there it is. Can't believe I can't find the battery. Salt Lake City INTL oh. Information India. 1100 Zulu weather. Wind 130 at 5, visibility 10. Sky conditions 18,000 scattered, temperature minus 6, dew point minus 10. Altimeter 3031. Arriving runways 34 right, 34 left, 35, 32. Departing runways 34 right, 34 left, 35, 32. Advise on initial contact you have India. previous flight crew left the COM2 radio speaker on. I don't like to listen to COM1 and COM2 at the same time. You get overlapping radios, so just COM1 for now. I put my microphone on COM1. I'm going to put Christy's microphone on COM1. But she's going to listen to COM2. Uh, here's the valves for the emergency landing gear release, right behind that little panel. And let's get the position lights on. Let's get the seatbelt signs on. We're going to be boarding passengers here pretty quick. We'll get the emergency exit lights armed. We can get the packs turned on to make things a little more comfortable. You can hear the fans in the background. We'll get the window heat on. We'll get the IRS starting the alignment process. We'll dial this fully clockwise, and we can see that we have seven minutes for the IRS to align. We'll test the light bulbs on the leading edge flat, uh, slats and flaps uh, uh, monitor. We'll check the flight recorder. It's normal. Radio 1, NAV 1. I like to listen to the Morse identifier code if I'm flying into a VOR. We'll get the marker beacon um, identifier, and we're going to leave this microphone to the PA position. This is the radio, the backup radio I use to make uh, public address announcements. We'll do a stall warning test, and we'll have to come back and... I'm sorry, that's the mock airspeed warning test. We'll come back and do the stall warning test in a little bit. Uh, for right now, uh, ground power is putting out well. Battery power is good. We are looking pretty good. I know we are at 4250 altitude here in Salt Lake City. We'll dial that in just in case we have to come back to this field. And 
and our flight level today is 320. Automatic. Okay. Um, I think we're pretty good up there. Don't we have any better lighting? What's oh, better lighting? Uh, nope, that's not lighting. But there were some. Oh, here they are. I was looking for some. Boy, they take quite a while to get lined up to get to get some illumination. So, Sever 3 OAL Mod 8. One great thing about uh, Pilot to ATC is if you're flying in the United States, you have access to every government chart that the government makes free of charge. No Navigraph subscription service. I wish they would do this for the whole world, of course. But let's look at the uh, departure, the Sever 3 departure, and we'll do our briefing. This will be our departure briefing. Um, depart runway 34, heading on a course of 341 to the Wasatch VOR Tango Charlie Hotel. Here's the radio frequency, but we don't need that because it's, it's, a, it's a waypoint in the computer. Then we'll do a hard right turn to course 193. We'll fly to Edith. Edith is identified by the Wasatch. There's a military area just off to our right, so we want to avoid that restricted zone. Then we'll fly the 170 course to Sever. And Sever is identified off of the Milford VOR and also the Coaldale VOR. And when we get to Sever, we'll fly course 238. This is at flight level 280, 280, and then flight level 310 on a 238 heading to OAL. And that will be the end of our procedure. Taxi. Uh, briefing. We're going to take a right turn from the concourse, turn right on the first available taxiway, and that should take us directly to runway 34 right. So taxi briefing and departure briefing are accomplished. Let's set up our flight management computer. Correct aircraft, correct engine thrust rating, nav data is out of date, that's what we'll use, position initialization, here's our last location, let's go to the next page and pull up a GPS coordinate, in the scratch pad it goes, and in the blocks, uh, oh, quite a difference between the last location and our current location, that's a little surprising, a little off might be uh, reasonable if they move the airplane from a, a hangar or some other gate.
let's look at our routing. Plan page. Well, I can tell right now we've got a vector. So we're flying north to TCH Tango Charlie Hotel. Yeah, we've, we've got a vector right here. We don't really need that vector. It's such a close waypoint. Let's get rid of it. No vector, Victor. Oops. Oops. Why can't I clear that vector? Hmm. Should be able to clear that vector. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I don't seem to be able to clear it, but I'm going to move TCH into its spot. That clears it. Maybe. You know, I've been flying the Airbus quite a while lately. Maybe I forgot that that's the way you're supposed to do it. Okay, let's look at this again. Edith Sayer, OAL, and then we're on our procedure. That looks nice and straight. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's start welcoming our passengers aboard. Yeah, I can hear the pitter-patter of little feet. Let's get some performance. Zero fuel weight should be in there. Flight level 320. We have a departure runway, so we ought to be able to get some B speeds. Reserves are at 2.2. Cost index is 35. Steep descent after arching. Yes, one of the reasons I like this approach is that we're coming over the Sierra Nevada mountains and we need to be rather aggressive, rather aggressive to get down, slow down and drop down to make those runways in San Francisco. That's, that's kind of the fun of doing this. Um, did we generate this plan? Yes, we did. Let's take a look here. Um, Salt Lake City, Sever 3, OAL, Mod 8, SFO, 320 on the altitude. Top of climb winds are 000 at 82. So we'll put that in under cruise wind. Not going to fill out the rest of this. No D rate today. The runway is plenty long. It's 13,000 foot runway, but we're at 4,200 feet, and um, airplanes don't perform as well under three conditions high altitude, hot weather, and humid weather. Um, well, we don't have to worry about hot and humid here in December, but we're certainly at high altitude. So without that extra performance, we're going to need a, a lot more runway, and we'll leave a deep, uh, uh, standard takeoff, no D-rate. 
It always seems to be you're in the mountains where you have the least runway available, and yet that's when you have to have the most, you need to get the best performance. So we'll verify our V speeds. I'm going to go down and set the trim 3.25 on the trim wheel. Wonderful. I just want to verify the uh, the altitude here. This used to be a little dinky airport before uh, 4227. This used to be a dinky airport before uh, Delta made it a hub. Put 4427 in the barrel for the uh, decision height in case we have to come back. Okay, we did the mock warning test. Let's go upstairs and see if we can get that uh, stall warning test. There it is. And we might as well do a systems check. Flight slow. Pull up. Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. Terrain. Terrain. Pull up. Obstacle. Obstacle. Pull up. Airspeed low. We'll do a lights test. Check every light in the palace. Check every bulb, every filament, every LED. Looking for any light bulb that might be out. Lights test seems to be fine. We will do a test for our auto throttle and autopilot lights on both sides. That's fine. And we will do a fire test on the engine and APU. Fault, APU get up. Wheel well fire. Landing gear. Cargo fire. Let's check the oxygen. At least I'll check my side. Linda can do her own side. Okay, that's good. V speed 124. Let's put that up here in the. Runway heading is going to be 340. Let's get a clearance. Salt Lake City INTL Information India. 1200 Zulu weather. Wind 130 at 5, visibility 10. Sky conditions 18,000 scattered, temperature minus 6, 
dew point minus 10. Altimeter 3031. Arriving runways 34 right, 34 left, 35, 32. Departing runways 34 right, 34 left, 35, 32. Advise on initial contact you have India. Salt Lake Clearance Delivery, Delta 43, ready to copy. Delta 43, we don't have a flight plan. Oh, on flight you don't have a flight plan for me? That's a shame. I need to file a flight plan. There you go. I'll make you happy. Salt Lake Clearance Delivery, Delta 43, ready to copy. Delta 43 is cleared to Kilo Sierra Fox Trot Oscar. Live the SAVYR 3 departure with the OL transition, then direct to India November Yankee Oscar Echo then as filed. Expect departure runway 34 right. Climb to 8000 feet via the departure. Expect higher clearances 2 minutes after departure. Departure on 120.9 Squawk 6566. Delta 43 is clear to Kilo Sierra Foxtrot Oscar. Fly the SEVI 3 departure with the OAL transition, then direct to India November Yankee Oscar Echo then as filed. Climb to 8000 feet via the departure. Expect higher clearances 2 minutes after departure. Departure on 120.9 Squawk 6566. Delta 43 we are back correct. Altimeter 2999 2 contact ground on 121.9 when ready for pushback have a good morning. Altimeter 2999 2 ground on 121.9 Delta 43. She just gave us a radically different altimeter setting. I went to TARA mode, I'm sorry, TA mode here in the transponder, uh, traffic advisory mode. The traffic advisory mode tells you if there's conflicting traffic, but it doesn't do anything about it. TARA mode, traffic advisory and resolution, actually takes command of your airplane and will move you around. So TA mode while you're here at the gate, and then TARA mode before we take off. Now to get my nav radio uh, speaker turned on and my marker beacon speaker. As I mentioned, I like to listen to those Morse identifiers, and I love hearing the marker beacon. As we're taking off on 3-4 right, you're going to hear a beep, 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 a very fast-paced uh, pulse. That's the inner marker. If you were coming into the runway from the other direction, that would be your inner marker. But I like to hear those marker beacons. I know a lot of people turn them off. Let's, uh, you want to run a checklist, Christy? Let's do our pre-flight checklist. Pre-flight checklist. Voice recorder. Checked on. Oxygen. 100% on my side. Tested 100%. Navigation and display switches. Ah, uh, they seem to be working fine. Normal, auto. Window heat. Window heat is on. On. Pressurization mode selector. Pressurization is selected to auto. Auto. Flight instruments. Flight, uh, current course is 284. Current, uh, Altitude setting is three ninety uh, 29.92 and the barrel, oh, altitude is set to 8,000 and the setting is 29.92. Heading 270. Altitude 3,870. Altimeter 2992.
parking brake. Parking brake is set. Engine start levers. Engine start levers are to cut off. Pre-flight checklist completed. Okay, let's fire up the APU. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be taking off in just a few minutes. Flight attendants, please prepare the cabin for departure. Okay, the cabin is secured. Have a good flight. to dual bleed. Tax off. We'll be starting the engines here pretty soon. Salt Lake ground. Delta Fort Tree requests pushback and engine start. Delta Force Repus Havak and engine start approved. Pushback and engine start approved. Delta 4-3. Let's uh, get the chocks removed. Check the doors. You know, I never open the doors for the poor baggage folks. Ground to cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. Folks from the cockpit like to welcome you on board. We're ready up front. Everybody's closed up outside. Uh, we're just waiting uh, to get some of our uh, performance numbers and uh, the clearance from uh, air traffic control and we should be underway. It's our pleasure, uh, pleasure having you on board with us today. Sit back, relax, uh, enjoy the flight. Should be underway here shortly. Thanks for flying with Delta today. Ground to cockpit, tow is driving up. I thought 
I pulled those chocks. What are those chocks doing there? Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Starting pushback and you may start engines. We'll get the hydraulics going. We'll get the pedo static heat on. We will kick on the rest of the fuel pumps. Go to now, engine number two to ground, and let's monitor the spool up. We'll feed in some fuel. Setting 15. Let's do a control surface check. Flaps 15 set. Elevator full down. Neutral, elevator, full up, no binding, neutral, aileron right, no binding, neutral, aileron left, no binding, neutral, rudder right, no binding, neutral, rudder left, no binding, neutral, and just for you, Christine... Operation complete. Go ahead and set the parking brake. Parking brake on, just for you, Disconnecting Christine. Disconnecting Stand by. Do a, do a speed brake check. Oh, look, that speed brakes worked as well. How about that? Okay, control check completed. How about a after startup? What did we do a start? I don't know what checklist we did. Did we do a before start checklist? Let's make sure. Before start checklist. We probably missed it. Papers. I have my papers. Flight deck door. Flight deck door is closed. Closed and locked. Fuel. Uh, fuel quantity is uh, 11,000. 
pump zone. Tow is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the left. On. We'll see you next time and have fun up there. Window. Windows are locked. Locked. MCP. One, two, four on the airspeed. Heading is 340, altitude 8000. Speed 124. Heading 340, altitude 8000. Take off speeds. Take off speeds are 110 on the B1, 111 on the BR, and 124 on the B2. V1 110 V rotate 111 V2 124 CDU pre-flight CDU pre-flight is complete Completed Rudder and aileron trim Rudder and aileron tree is free and, free and zero Taxi and takeoff briefing Taxi and takeoff briefing complete. Anti collision light. Uh, can you check on that? On. Thank you. Before start checklist completed. Okay, let's brief our emergency procedure. If we lose an engine prior to V1, we will stop on the runway. After V1, we will continue takeoff and land straight ahead. If we're able to maintain uh, pattern altitude, we're going to make a left turn, left traffic pattern back to runway 34. That is our emergency procedure, and let's go on to the taxi checklist. Before taxi checklist, generators on. On. Probe heat. Probe heat is on. On. Anti ice. Anti ice is not necessary. Off. Wing anti ice off. Engine anti ice off. Isolation valve. Isolation valve. Yes, it should be on auto. I don't auto. think it is. Engine start switches. Engine start switches are continuous. Continuous. Recall. Recall is checked. Checked. Auto brake. Auto brake. Rejected takeoff. RTO. Engine start levers. Idle detent. Flight control. Checked. Checked. Flaps. Flap 15. Flaps 15 set. Green light. Detent. Ground equipment. Ground equipment is clear. Clear. Before taxi checklist completed. Okay, APU off. Dual bleed off. Packs back on. And we look pretty good. Salt Lake City ground, Delta 4 Tree requests taxi, runway 34 right. Delta Four Three Taxi to Runway I'll be giving a brief safety presentation. Hotel. Okay, hotel be sure all carry-on items are securely stowed in an overhead bin. Taxi Inflate smaller items three, under right the seat in front of you. Hotel. Hotel one. Hold short and runway 34 right, Delta 4 Three. Taxi lights on.
before takeoff checklist. Before takeoff checklist. Flaps. Flaps 15. Flaps 15 set. Green light. Detent. Stabilizer trim. Stabilizer trim is set. Three two units set. Transponder. Transponder is in TA mode. Would you switch it to TARA mode? TARA set. Before takeoff checklist completed. Thank you, Linda. And thank you to those folks who are watching. I'm going to say goodbye in this video, but if you would like to continue with me to San Francisco, be sure to tune in to the next video. Bye.